Check. All right, looks like the mic is working. I mean, come on, let's just switch over. Hey, everyone, and welcome to a little night session. Um, new streaming setup for audio i got my tolman package today hey it's so good being back in europe to be able to um order from tolman again <laughs> i love tolman uh in case you don't know and you're from the other side of the pond uh that's the german slash european equivalent to uh guitar center i would say uh biggest uh distributor of audio gear in europe and another package is coming tomorrow, hopefully. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Waiting for stuff. Yeah, but hopefully you have some nice audio. Uh, I hope it sounds good out there. Uh, I just jumped on the stream to to actually check out what it sounds like and um, how it works. Because what I wanted to do is like separate the uh, mic and the voiceover from my DAW. So I got... Uh, you can't see that on cam right now. I got the nifty little Go XLR uh, as a controller for, for the mic and for the system audio and everything. And it's a lot of streaming gibberish. Uh, if you don't stream, you may not have any idea what I'm talking about. So anyway, thanks for tuning in. So, voice sounds great. That's good to hear. Thanks, uh, Source4 uh was fiddling around a little bit with the settings there so and the cool thing is now i can change the daw for example and switch to studio one and still have my voice going and can talk and chat to you guys so that makes life a little easier and uh this is a dynamic mic so hopefully we don't get as much from the key clicking and I really need to hit hard for you to, to hear that. Sorry for that. And I can quickly mute myself. And the greatest feature that I'm going to use quite a lot is when you get the road down dirty and say, Oh, holy. I can just, um, mute myself so I can make that channel a little more kid friendly in case we say anything that you don't want to uh, hear the outside world I can just beep myself out <laughs> I love that holy so there we go <laughs> Um, so I can now, in the future you tell YouTube that there are no swear words in the videos isn't that great so let's take a look at the <laughs> i will slightly overuse that in the near first next streams because it's just new and fun hey arkin uh yes i am good thank you how are you man um so i loaded up the session that i did last first of all i apologize for being absent as of late and uh not doing much streams lately uh, but sometimes it just happens that work gets in the way, you know. So, uh, yeah, I was just busy. And was well, there Alex music? Hope you were fine. I got before two days Cubase Artist 11 Celtic Era in my interface. I will make my third track soon. Congrats, Alex. Way to go. And with Era, it shouldn't take long to come up with a new track. 
Hey Eve, nice to see you. How are you doing? Um, what's bad is that my uh, chat app here on, on screen where I can read what you were writing uh, gives me wrong information on the view count because it tells me that I have zero, zero viewers right now. Oh, I love that voice. That mic is actually pretty good. So I was torn between the uh, Shure SM7B and uh, now I got the Rode Podcaster, uh, Rode Pod Mic, that's what it's called. And um, I do like the sound. It's pretty cool, pretty, pretty nice and round and uh, it's great for podcasting, which I don't do yet. So, um, hey, baby lords. So it looks like Twitch is running fine now as well, which is good to know. Let me quickly check that. Twitch TV slash composing tutorials and mute the output, please. Mute. There we go. Um, yeah, working. That's good. Can we finally stop the music? The cool thing is I can now have uh, music running... Uh, so with the Go XR, I have four individual faders to um, control music and any other sound sources, which is pretty cool. It's still not perfect in terms of a streaming setup for for digital digital audio workstation. And that is uh, because you have two different sound cards and the ASIOs, ASIO stream. And merging that all in um, OBS is not as easy, but it works now. I can hear the stream, I can hear the system audio, and I can hear the DAW, and it's all working fine. <sighs> Long story short, where were we? Uh, when will you react to community tracks? There will be a new Listen to Your Tracks, Volume 5, I think it is. Uh... In probably two weeks, I will post an announcement soon. So we will do the next Listen to Your Tracks session soon. Baby Lords, you got the Nucleus template. Thank you very much for that. I appreciate it. And uh, yeah, it takes a little moment to, to get around the sample start thing. But once it's rolling, it just sounds great, you know. You're gonna have to rinse your mouth with soap. <laughs> How dare you tell me the <laughs> what I gotta do? I really love that. It's a neat little function. Um, so let's take a quick listen to to that track that uh, we did on the last night session. Funny or you know, good thing is, I can now get rid of this track. And the greatest thing is, whenever I do something in Cubase, I will not get audio dropouts on the mic. Because um, nothing is connected to Cubase anymore with the mic, and I also see it in the in the CPU meter. So uh, hopefully we have a little bit of a better performance with streaming live. So this is the big template loaded right now, as you can see here, like close to two thousand tracks. Who the actual f is needing that much tracks? But well, here we go, and. Uh, Last time I wanted to work on a little bit of stuff that is uh, resembling um, that Survivor style, Survivor, the TV show, if you don't know that. It's about a bunch of guys sitting in kind of a paradise and trying to survive. I think it's 25 people and then they get voted off and everything and... Uh, Till the last man standing or last woman so uh and the iconic thing about this tv show is actually the score so initially it was done by uh russ lindau and also uh vanacor and it is just just <laughs> wait a second dog was going crazy Say hi to Cookie and Linus. <laughs> and um, yeah, 
I watched a bunch of these. Uh, the actually season three Australia, I think, was the one that I saw recently, and I just love the score and the sound of it. So I just wanted to try to to create something along the lines of uh, of this. And uh, here we go. That's what we came up with on the last stream. So let me just play that a little bit and. Damn, how many tracks did I use for this? <laughs> this is crazy. I mean, I could also just open up all the folders at once, but that will be boring, right? How big is the file size of the template? Well, let me check. File save as... 44 megabytes right now. Um, I can save that as well. And I can also save the file and keep talking because it's not connected anymore. I really love that. And first of all, we can... No, we cannot. Here we can. We can switch to DAW mode. So now, first of all, you don't need to see me in full scale. And also, uh, you have a better grasp of the of the actual template right so with that many tracks are using v pro yes this is complete v pro setup so i am very happy about that because my uh performance on the on the system itself it's i mean it's still 20 gigs usage but um the biggest chunk of google chrome eats the biggest chunk of that uh, funny enough, why is the CPU running so high? That is strange. It shouldn't be that high. Um, that's interesting. Holy hell, why is my CPU so high? That is strange. Especially since Cubase doesn't show that high of a, of a CPU count. I mean, it still can be because, um because of the streaming at the same time. So OBS is running and uh, Chrome is running with the video playing. Actually, I want to change that and put the video playback on my, uh, on my uh, what is it, iPad. I could technically close the YouTube page, but I just want to keep kind of an eye on it, see if it's running. Um, uh, what buffer I am on so I'm using my RME Fireface or Babyface and have it on 512 I think yeah I think I have it on 512 which gives me uh, 11 milliseconds latency which is fine so I can work with that hey Ember Eyes yeah I'm kind of shocked a little bit about the performance of the CPU here. But well, I mean, as long as it's running and not stuttering, everything is fine, right? Um, so yeah, let's stop talking and just play that stuff and see what it sounds like. I hope it's working still as it should. That sounds pretty nice. Um, and the performance is not clipping anymore, which is also great. I mean, there's one thing that I may be guilty of. Every return channel 
of uh, VE Pro has the virtual mix rack attached to it. I just thought that might be a good idea because it is actually light on CPU and uh, gives you everything you need in terms of channel strip uh, to, to tweak stuff, for example. I mean, I haven't done anything there yet. Uh, also, I want to check um, if the master has any limiting applied. So let me quickly check that. Too many tracks. Uh, okay, yes, we do. We have an L3. Okay, I don't need to be that loud. So it was a little bit... Uh... I also realized that I didn't like the uh, phrases here in the beginning from the from the vocals from vocalese. Um, how many rams do you have? Uh, not a single one. Also, no sheep and no cats. I just have two dogs. If that's what you mean. <laughs> but if you're asking for the technical side of things, my slave PC is. Um, a Ryzen 1950X with 128 gigs of RAM, Threadripper, and my other slave that I'm utilizing right now as a slave is actually my laptop, um, which has also 64 gigs of RAM, utilizing 50 of that. Uh, it's a neat little laptop that gets the job done. Uh, Sergio, I have a question. How to pre-gain pro properly on template? Um, that's... <clears throat> That's not a five second answer. Um, you can technically, so let's take for example, array of violins long. So when you say audio fader right now, so what I would go for is um, at max hitting the channels at around minus 18 dB. Sometimes minus 12 is fine as well. Uh, I am guilty of not going there myself always. So when I have other instruments like, for example, Medusa stuff, um, So that's obviously quite a bit louder and I would need to turn that down in the mix later down the line. Um, so there are two ways you can approach it. You can um, dial down the actual instrument return, uh, not instrument return, uh, the pre-gain of the fader where the instrument returns from VE Pro. Um, I did that on QS10 but I realized that with 500 pre-gains at minus five or something, uh, funny enough, that was raising the CPU load significantly. So uh, what I do is I usually set as a baseline my contact instruments to uh, minus six on the contact fader itself, which means uh, if you look at the instruments here, uh, let's take not a latest, Let's take the, the flute shorts, for example. So the fader is at minus 5.7 in this case. 
Oh, my flute shorts here. So these are sitting on the slave. That is my initial volume setting, minus six. So, and um, if an instrument is still too loud with a minus six setting, uh, I just usually dial down the CC7, uh, the volume, to bring that fader up or down. Um, but minus six dB, which equals uh 101 on the midi cc is my uh base line so to say for everything and then i uh go from there so do you use any slave computers yeah for this template i use two slave computers so my my main machine is has enough other resources to do stuff um, and play instruments and just do MIDI, so to say. So I first need to check what I actually played here. <laughs> I have no idea. So that was, okay, we were in E. So there you see, track delay minus 250 sucks big time and I have that on a little button here on my complete control hit the button and have the track delay to zero so for immediately immediate playability can play shit uh, can play today sorry oh i gotta remember that i can beep myself i just need to think of beeping myself before i actually say bad words otherwise it's a little bit hilarious okay what did i play here Uh, when you compare this template with enable, disable, which one will be your first choice? Uh, definitely this one. So uh, I have said that in other uh, streams before. There are some advantages to the disable enable approach. Obviously, the first one that you can just load way more than you actually need and uh, can have everything available and load it up with the touch of a button. What I found when uh, working with that template approach is that, uh, so for anyone who doesn't know what this is about, uh, you have a big template with, say, 2,000 tracks loaded, and every track is, like, disabled, either within Cubase itself or even within uh, VE Pro. And with a single click of a MIDI controller or a key command, you can activate that track uh from right away and especially with the v pro enabled disabled uh version uh the problem that i ran into is you load the template and everything is disabled and when you open up a session that you have been working on before where you over the course of writing uh have instantiated or enabled 50 60 maybe 80 contact instances or instrument instances um, when you open up a project where you have that done the next day for example after reloading the template and um, having everything set up 
what happens is that suddenly VE Pro gets the message to enable all these 90 contact instances at once. And that, in my case, oftentimes led to a complete breakdown uh, and and uh, VE Pro just crashed because it had to load all the instruments at once. Um, so it has its downsides. And also... Um, when you have the horsepower to run the instruments in a loaded state from the get-go, uh, I would always appreciate to do that because it just even gets rid of that one button to activate a track. So when the when the capacities are there uh, are there from from your system you, that you can run a bunch of instruments loaded, ready to go, fully ready to play so to say uh this is kind of my preferred approach but to have that kind of uh that kind of system requires a bunch of investment it is just what it is so you need a decent machine or several decent machines hooked up in a in a in a network to communicate with each other so um if you ask me, loaded or disabled template, I would go for the fully loaded one. Any suggestion for an Arabic ethnic library? Have you tried the Eduardo Terilonti Ancient Era Persia? Yes, I have, and I can fully recommend it. It's a great library. I have a bunch of stuff from, um, from Persia era in here, like the plucked instruments, for example. I love some of the sounds in there. I think you even have some rhythms in there, yeah, like when you have a different time. I think they work right on everything above 100. So, um, just some of the plucked instruments, and you also get some great wind instruments. So these are actually the, uh, I think, winds, what was it? Uh, Celtic, not Celtic winds, uh, per, that was a library before. Um, hey, David, nice to see you. How are you able to have so many tracks loaded into RAM and V Pro? Uh, no, the contact instruments are not perched. Um, I just spread it out. So um, these, this is my first slave with uh, 128 gigs of RAM. And then I have a second slave with 64. And then I also have still my, my quick load approach, so to say, if I need instruments that are not part of the template, then I can just enable them within QAs and uh, load them up. So, Desert Winds, thanks, that was the name I was looking for. So some of these Desert Winds, uh, that was in library on its own before and is now included in a Persian era. So the Duduk.
very, very nice sound there from the uh, Persian era. And uh, there's a bunch of other stuff. There's also uh, the string stuff, of course. Uh, Persian era. Yeah, the Lyra. So, uh, lots of stuff. By the way, uh, that is even tenfold with the, the stress of Balkan Ethnic Orchestra. There's so much great stuff in there. The romantic violin, I love this one. I love that one. It's really, really nice. But then you have like the... Uh, not loaded! I knew that! gives other ideas to to work on some other stuff uh the cavall is great as well from stress of uh reverb is pretty much uh, cinematic rooms throughout. Although I have to admit that a lot of the uh, instruments from uh, Eduardo, they're actually bone dry. If you if you play that kind of stuff, like the take this one. But you can, I, I put the engine reverb that is integrated within engine for the Eduardo libraries onto a knob. Because when you load all the instruments with the reverb applied, it's just a CPU hawk. But uh, I can switch that on just with a button on the um, instrument itself. So this is the internal reverb from, from that Eduardo has pre, uh, provided for his sounds. Of course, right now on this one is not working. <laughs> I don't know why even. Uh, let's take a let's take a woodwind. I know there's working with these. So, for example, the deer bone flute. Let's turn off the sense. So it's bone dry. But you can also instead of using my own reverb, I could also activate the engine reverb. So, but you can also keep that dry and use my own setting. I mean, there's a delay attached to it now, I think because of the overtone effects. Yeah, because of the, I had that stuff in, in that track. Hey, Stefan, greetings to Karl Markstadt. Oh, we were on 160. I love it when hits and booms and swooshes are tempo synced. <laughs> so it was still on the one. Uh, 
Um, I did not get the Cinematic Rooms Pro because um, I don't work usually don't work in surround so uh that's why i was fine with not having the pro version but i am using this one cinematic rooms liquid sonics and our favorite one is actually hall's large hall with 2.67 um reverb tail that's what it's called I was missing the word. <laughs> so, um, ba -ba 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 -ba, let's get rid of this. We don't need this. There we go. Um, so shall we keep working on this one or just do a new one? I feel I want to revisit that one later. So what I can do is save, just to be safe. What's a good way to start learning Slate VMR? Well, Steven has some awesome tutorials on, on his actual website, so you can check that out first. That is one of the first things I would try to, um, to get, a, get an understanding of what you can do with it. Let me close the folders here. And... Uh, I am jumping on a quick break because I just need to make some room and I will grab a corona obviously it's corona night so i need a beer uh i will be with you in a second and I'll leave you to the break see you in a minute So there we are back. Cheers, everyone. <sighs> no, not not right in the way. The corner down there. So there, there we can put it. Ah, uh, did I miss anything in the chat? Den real existieren Sozialismus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, back to topic. Let's save that as a new version. So. Command Alt S. Abuse the button. Yes, I will. The absolute <laughs> gonna tell me what I need to do. <laughs> And yes. RAM is getting slightly cheaper. 
My business partner is not going to like to hear that. <laughs> yeah, uh, have you tried modern scoring strings or watched the videos from Audio Bro? I wonder your comments. No, I have not watched. Actually, I mean, if we want to, we can check that. Um, and Audio Bro also did not get in touch about uh, hands-on or anything. Modern scoring strings, DAW integrations. Oh, I don't want to watch. Uh, okay, let's take a quick look at the Legato. So we can open that up. It sounds rather lovely. Hi there. Andrew Caresti is here with Audio Bro. Hey, Andrew. Uh, what you just heard right there was... Nice to hear you. Uh, what else do we have? We have a closer look. It definitely sounds rather nice. Does it bring something to the table that I don't have with my 55 other string libraries? I'm not really sure. I'm definitely... I can definitely imagine that it has its place and the runs sound pretty nice. Scalar phrases that can be stitched together in our engine to form all sorts of longer phrases. I'm not a big fan of the interface, I have to admit. On all DVCs, of all the violins, yes. violas, and cellos. <laughs> and on the bases, we recorded three and four note major and minor. Rooms. I'm from the south of Berlin. In this video, we're going to cover both scales and octave runs, what makes them different, and how to use them. Now, trying to incorporate scales and runs in MIDI mockups. Has always been very it definitely sounds nice and I think it is a it is definitely a workhorse so if you if you don't have any other string library uh, what is the price point of of uh, modern scoring strings I don't even know modern scoring strings audio bro how much we have to rob a bank for these is here all your demos videos all the good stuff there we go i'm a new audio bro customer it's it's 549 oh it's not as expensive as i would have expected oh okay mss and legato expansion so 798 uh enterprise i do have the full la scoring string so for me it would be 549 It's actually cheaper than I would have expected. Uh, I paid $1,200 for less back in the day. <laughs> And I don't use it anymore. Damn it. Um, so, yeah. There goes your money. But I wanted them in the stream. I bought it hoping it would be go-to, but it needs a lot of tweaking out of the box. Well, that's what the same thing with LA scoring strings back then. Uh, I bought last to get the full discount. What is your preferred way of implementing a new big library into your template? There's a reason why I haven't bought a big library in a while, because I'm just happy with the way my template sounds. And uh, I mean, I just add on when needed. I mean, this template that I'm here on right now is actually 
a reiteration of an old version that was tweaked and changed. I mean, building templates and, and working with templates is a lifelong process. It never ends. You know, you're never at the point where you say, this is it, I'm done. This is my template that I keep working with forever. And then you get the next email of a library that has been released. And there you go. So, um, the last, what was the last edition that I put in? Well, I get a Flatus uh, in, from, from Stresor for a stream during the, I think Black Friday sale was, Black Friday or even later. I did an extensive stream on a Flatus that maybe I will link in the video here later after I edited this uh, stream. If not, just search my channel for Flatus, you will find it. So I brought that in into the template here because it just sounds gorgeous. Just love the sound, and especially on these uh, short divisies. So that was the last big one I got into the template. But honestly, I just started from scratch with this template here. I wanted to have that, like, doing everything I need, uh, no matter the style. So I can just get into a rock patch and start. Start on something like that. Um, Orange Tree has released a banjo today, so I might get that later. Uh, that was uh, Orange Tree sampled slide acoustic. guitar was the first one um, chocolate audio raw tweak the sound a little bit on this one with um, ships my good old friend there you go you see the settings. I think I just didn't do anything. I think I just loaded electric guitar one and called it a day. I mean, talking about real, I just got a track approved for a library that I did yesterday. Um, you can listen to this. I was pretty smacked how good it sounded. Listen to this. That one turned out pretty great. 
Ample Sound. Ample Sound Taylor. Very, very nice sound. Uh, that's true. Uh, demo music, how do you render and place media regions? I don't, to be honest. Uh, especially if you work with VE Pro, render in place does not really work the way it is in, supposed to work with uh, individual instruments. So it's totally easy if I have an instrument here and uh, enable that, enable the instrument have some something running and then render in place. That's totally fine. But with VE Pro, the problem is, uh, and I made that mistakes more than once <laughs> when you have. Uh, where do we see that? When you have a vPro instance with all these returns, I think the percussion one is the worst of all. So when I want to have a percussion, so that has 192 outputs. And if I go to the percussion and want to render in place something that I have done on the percussion, um something over drums or something like that. Take the region and bounce that in place. I won't do it now. What happens is you get uh, 191 audio files because render in place renders all the multi-temporal returns. Um, so it's not really suited for uh, multi-timbre instruments that return. So I just don't use render in place. If I need audio for sake then um i just export and re-import which is kind of the same thing with just one more mouse click that's the reason your new v pro template is full of instance with only one contact well that is kind of i mean if it works for you that's fine that's fine well it's kind of counterintuitive to have just one v pro instance with one contact then you can then then you're more efficient um to put it put it um as instrument tracks in cubits directly ca raw is up raw raw that's true yeah chocolate audio up raw raw one of the best electric guitars uh that i have ever encountered on the um, virtual instrument market for electric guitars. It's just friggin' badass. Um, I just don't know what I want to write today. So what what are we going to do? Could start with something from... Um, damage? Or maybe different tempo. Start out with 130. get a lot of damage um but may we start melodic array I mean, talking about virtual guitars right now, do we, let's address the elephant in the room because people ask me. So I, I do have, um, I am supported by Native Instruments, so they sent me Complete 13 when it came out to uh, utilize on stream, etc. So that's all fine. And yesterday, no, last week, 
I got the email with uh, vintage guitar, native session guitarist vintage. And 10 minutes later, I have, I did buy it. <laughs> so I bought it right away because um, there is no way of not buying this. And I mean, we can quickly check it out if you guys want to take a look at the electric vintage. Holy shite, that thing is gorgeous. And that is one of the f libraries that does not react to CC7 for the volume. I just don't know why none of the session guitarist instruments react to CC7. Although you tell the instrument here that it actually receives standard controller for volume and panning, but it does not react. So you have to learn it. And then it fucks up completely. Anyway, yeah, it's a, it's a gorgeous Telecaster. Let's dial that down. So same concept if you're familiar with the other um, native guitars. It's pretty straightforward. You get some rhythms and you also have a melody instrument. Uh, we can check out some of these, some of these rhythms. So, uh, Baby Lords, when I load your Nucleus template and hit stop button, I see all the MIDI CC go up for all tracks briefly for a second and hear pop, crackle, also see CPU overload on performance meter. You know why, maybe? Well, because most of these tracks do have MIDI CC data in them, and at least all of them have, like I have here in my template, have MIDI CC in the beginning. And especially Cubase uh, has a, uh, is notorious in, like, transmitting the first initial MIDI CC value. Um, honestly, not much you can do about it. As long as it's playing back fine when it's playing back the track, the, this is not really something to worry about. It's just... Um, it is also for the sake of showcasing all the sounds from the, from the instrument. So... Um, Um, was just distracted by a message I got. Um, so it's not really something to worry about. And yeah, when you turn off the buffer size, it's even better. Watch me live at 3.40 a.m. from Armenia. Hey, Arin, nice to have you around. And... Uh, Elsewhere they call that insomnia, so maybe just grab some sleep, mate. It's not healthy to be awake at that time, unless you already get up again. Um, so yeah, road trip. That's the sound. Are you guys familiar with how the session instrument works? So you have the main song browser where you can choose different song styles vibrato control is sitting on mod wheel um just listen to some of the examples code lake It sounds glorious. Have to say that. So let's listen to this. So, and when you change the song, usually the sound preset changes as well.
Uh, this is not part of Complete 13. This is a new instrument that was just released last week. I pretty much think that it's going to be part of Complete 14. Very cool sounds in there. I wonder what M simulator they used. They used the all the internal ones. So there is amps and effects included. It's pretty much the same as I think Guitaric has. So Contact has now the same stuff that Guitaric offers. So a lot of this is derived from the Guitaric library. Um, but the, the sounds are uh, internal. It's just, the sound is great. Hey, Jason. I mean, with this stuff, you can immediately just get your Green Day vibes going. My headphones are the Slate VSX. But what I find most impressive where the thing, uh, this whole thing really comes to life is, and this is something that they introduced re just recently, I think last year with a session guitarist, uh, with, a, with a Gibson Deluxe, uh, that you now have a melody instrument as well. So you're not anymore just bound to, to the patterns and need to rearrange the patterns and rephrase them. It's 
so you can use the pattern or play it yourself. And it actually sounds really decent. And you can change all the guitar settings for the for the solo instrument as well. So you can change to bridge. Yay! <laughs> no. Um, so yeah, the solo instrument is, is even more cool. Because then you can just do your own stuff with it, and I'm not bound to the to the patterns. So that is the pattern, and this is the way it sounds when you play it yourself. Also, what I really like about this one, they now have a um, DK control for the muted notes. So from ultra short. Very, very neat library. I do like it a lot. I also got, I mean, since we're talking about guitars, I got the scoring acoustic guitars from uh, Heaviosity, also the same day it was released. Talking about um, gear acquisition syndrome. But I mean, just play two notes and you know why you need to have that. This is just gorgeous. Lovely stuff. Getting a new acoustic guitar tomorrow, hopefully. Really dig that stuff. Also the reversed ones. Just gorgeous instrument. I dig that. Um, 
So let's stop with the fumbling around on guitars. And uh, you can definitely run this through Guitar Rig for some nice distortion. That's for sure. Um, where was I? I was actually at just trying out my new streaming setup and uh, the new mic. Rode pot mic. Nice little thing. And pretty cheap, actually, as well. Again, as I mentioned before, I was thinking of the uh, Shure SM7B, which uh, sits on your wallet at, I think, $400, something like that. Pretty expensive, in my opinion. And I just watched some YouTube videos on the SM7B and the pod mic, which I think it came out last year. And um, this is just a beautiful mic. It works as it should. So do you have some ethnic stuff libraries? Well, if we open up the ethnic portion of the template, we have a bunch of ethnic stuff that we can look at. So we have plucked instruments, Celtic era, um, dark era and Persian era. Other plucked instruments, the Ron Rocco is amazing. That was released from Loot Audio just a few weeks ago. Isn't that a gorgeous sound? Combine that with a dulcimer. Resonator, always good. Uh, that is indigenous, by the way. Really great stuff. Um, orange free samples, mandolin, always great to have. Ethno World 6 is great for some stuff. Grab Monochord. 
great for sound design stuff and some layers. Um, other ethnic stuff, well, the Time Micro. Very cool stuff. I actually want to include in the template all the uh, native instruments uh, discovery series. There's some really good stuff in there as well uh, for ethnic uh, instruments. I actually want to do a dedicated stream just with the discovery series and take a look at that. So nevertheless, Lovely sound there, Jade from Stress of Sampling. There is no UVI instrument in this template. We had these before. Even mallets. That's, by the way, something to not underestimate. Ethnic mallets can bring so much color uh, to, to a score. So that is great. Uh, that is um, Frecht Sounds Zendrum. Circle Belt Sound Iron. Again, sound iron, the bamblong. And then again, some Ethno World 6 stuff. Little uh, Loops de la Creme has some great stuff also that is just a little niche that you don't find anywhere else. If you need some nice bass. Uh, percussion where percussion is up here so um, for ethnic percussion I mainly use the world percussion series from evolution that pretty much covers everything you need so starting with African djembe
actually need to. Another one with a say say. So these sound just extremely good. That library is um, Evolution World Percussion. Uh, the cool thing about uh, this library, especially Evolution World Percussion, is that you not only, uh, I mean, especially as Western composers who are not familiar with the ethnic styles and the way this is played in the area, um, they include a ton of MIDI files uh, that you can shoot up straight from the instruments uh, that give you an idea of what these uh, instruments sound like or what the, the way they are played. So uh, you have these regular single hits i think starting on c3 then you have like rolls and flams an octave lower and these are midi so they i think work with whatever tempo you set them in and then you have loops in the bottom two octaves So I would have not thought of that kind of riff for for Middle Eastern. Well, maybe I would have, but one of my favorite sounds from the library. But then again. I have that thing hanging on my wall and can record that myself. So, um, but these sounds are just gorgeous. And the cool thing is also they have um, they have a very extensive four microphone settings, so you can really dial in the sound. To your needs, so you can go very close. You can bring in the tree. More room, less close. Which means you can put them back in the room. And then you can really put the ambience on top. Reset that to the beginning. Very inspiring stuff there. And uh, then again, you also have damage and all that kind of stuff where you have tons of other stuff. The JXL stuff from Handsome Percussion is amazing. I love the boobams. Hey Ram, what's happening over there? New mic. Hey Pierre, nice to see you. Listen to that low end. Isn't that crazy?
just some stuff that you always need. Yes, so um, that was, we were stuck at ethnic, sorry. And I still don't know what to write today. Well, maybe we don't write anything. I mean, I just wanted to try out the mic setting, you know, and see if everything works, which we have been doing for the last one and a half hours, I guess. <laughs> so if you don't know how you get the time gone, there you go. Just try a new mic on stream live and let everybody take part. Um, Atmosphere there. Why is that not looping? I hate you. Um, well then, let's do this. Um, this here. There we go. Since that. If you ever gonna use Omnisphere in your template, what you definitely want to make sure before doing anything else is to bring that fader down minus 10. <laughs> Something like that. Because it's just out. Very, very loud. That's what I want to say. Um, texture is playable. Let's take these. That is rather lovely. I just love the grandeur still. It just sounds awesome.
Um, I cannot really tell you anything about Keyscape uh, and if you need it because I don't have it. So I don't really know. It sounds great from the demos. Interesting harmonic texture. That's a nice final note of the day. So it seems like the stream setup overall is running. I'm just waiting for my other package from Toman tomorrow. Just some new guitar stuff. You can never have enough guitars, right? So you need guitars, of course. And um, yeah, let me know in the comments below if you if you like the sound of the setup and everything, if that works for you and if you dig it. Um, I will post the new stream schedule coming next week. Uh, I try to be more regular with uploads. Uh, also, have been working on my course, so that is going out soon. Hopefully, fingers crossed and everything. I'm just waiting for my new camera uh, because I want to record some other uh, videos for that. Uh, and want to give you a decent viewing experience. So I need a new camera and a new lens, most, most importantly. So um, that is coming soon. And uh, yeah, listening to your tracks is coming in March, uh, probably in about two weeks. I'll let you know. And other than that, cheers. Thanks for tuning in and uh, have a great weekend and um enjoy your time and i see you around and see you soon and if you haven't done so click in the link in the channels there is a shop you can buy stuff you there is a patreon where you can support me and uh upcoming streams uh it's just beginning of march so um yeah more stuff coming thanks for tuning in and bye bye <laughs>